Hi guys, welcome back to London. Look at that, that there is Goldsmiths Hall. All that lighting there will ensure when they're filming inside, sunlight. The lengths they go to to make a movie. Right, I'm in the city of London right now, aka the Square Mile. Actually, just visiting uh, Goldsmiths Hall, one of the city's old livery companies. I use their assay office, um, which is just just here, often used as film sets. Um, for those of you who don't know, new to the channel, just not aware, I uh, manufacture things here in London. Um, ladies' jewellery, gentlemen's accessories, traditional style accoutrements, because of the materials I use. There's a whole additional tier, a whole level of legislation that I have to adhere to. Um, the Hallmarking Act, the Goldsmiths Company are responsible for, I guess, enforcing um, and making sure that we all adhere to the, uh, the Hallmarking Act, the legislation. But anyway, my business and livery companies, the Hallmark Act is a whole other story and a very long one. Um, but while I'm here today, uh, I'm going to get some lunch in the city. Um, it's a Friday today and the city's very much a Monday to Friday. It peaks Monday to Friday. Um, the weekends, it's like a ghost town. Uh, there's a lot of international visitors, but I would say primarily they're here because it's the business district. There's a lot of tourist stuff on the I guess on the perimeter of it, you've got the Tower of London, we've been the Stones Throw from here, Monument to the Great Fire of London, which is 350 years, I think this year, um, some pools, there's a lot going on, but it, compared to weekdays, it feels like a ghost town at um, the weekends. So today, while some of the best spots are open, I'll take you to uh, at least one of the city's hidden gems for lunch. So, uh, short walk down the road, let's go. Just across the road from Goldsmiths Hall, here on Cheapside, right in front of us, is St Mary Le Beau Church. There's been a church on the site for hundreds of years. It was traditionally used to ring out the curfew bell, which was around 8 or, eight or 9 o'clock at night, to remind people when to put out their fires and go to bed. That then became a tradition before watches and clocks were commonplace, so people knew what time of evening it was. It had to be rebuilt a couple of times. It burnt down in the Great Fire of London in 1666, but was considered so important it was one of the first to be rebuilt by Sir Christopher Wren. And it was bombed during the Blitz and had to be rebuilt after the Second World War. It is also home to the Bow Bells. They're here in the city and not, as some people believe, in Bow. Yeah, that is uh, St Mary Le Bow Church. And those are the church bells you need to be born within earshot of to be considered a cockney. Or so, uh, so the story goes. Traditionally, a place for uh, merchants here in the city to uh, do business. Apparently they had quite high uh, expectations in terms of uh, conduct and uh, originally you could try only trade goods in there, the stockbrokers were, uh, weren't allowed in because of their uh, bad manners and they had to trade in the local coffee shops. Um, we'll go and check one out in a little while. Um, and that is a situation that's effectively reversed city-wide. It's now um, the whole city is dominated by financial services and uh, yeah there's not a lot of trading goods going on here anymore or not visibly and uh, I guess unless you're supplying the kind of thing people who work in um, financial services want. Anyway we're nearly we're nearly at our lunch spot. Shore walk. Today 
the Royal Exchange is actually open to the public. You can pop in. There's a small champagne bar in the middle, and it's surrounded both on the inside and the outside by a boutique stores selling luxury goods. You can buy jewellery, watches, cufflinks, ties, designer handbags. It's definitely worth popping in, even just to check out the amazing architecture. Okay, as I was saying earlier, a lot of these uh, huge grand buildings in between them, there are little alleyways, doorways. Because this is an old part of the city, there's a lot of um, a lot of old alleys leading to yards, and uh, yeah, a lot of the hidden gems are behind these buildings. So we're headed down Ball Court, which is just there, to a place called Simpsons. Royal Exchange building is just there, but yeah, this leads to a whole a whole network of alleyways. I have no idea where half the little uh, alleyway and courtyards lead, so uh, let's go. Thomas Simpson established his first restaurant here in London in 1723. He moved to this site in 1757. It's next door to the site of London's first coffee shop, which was established in a churchyard next door, later moved to a store next door back in the 1650s. There's a bar, coffee shop there today. You can go and check that out after lunch. It's a communal style dining, kind of like a Wagamama's. Okay, let's take a look at the menu and see what we can have for lunch today. As it says on the front, been established back in 1757, makes this the oldest chop house in London. There's a whole page of the history of the restaurant. The breakfast menu, you can come here for breakfast. Today, I've come here for lunch, it's Friday. Every day they have changing daily specials, so you can come here every day and have something different. There's basically a daily roast and then a handful of British classics. There's then a whole page of dishes which don't change on a daily basis, so you can come here for the same thing every day. And also the sides that accompany the daily specials. I'm going to go for roast the day with Yorkshire puddings, which today is roast beef. And I'm going to have it with a side of roast potatoes and cauliflower cheese. The brass rails that look like luggage racks above the seating were actually installed for gentlemen's top hats, later used for bowler hats. They don't get a lot of use these days because city dress codes and attire evolve. Okay, we've got all the condiments you could ever need, Worcestershire sauce, Tabasco, ground black pepper, salt pepper, cayenne pepper I think there, English mustard, tomato ketchup, they come around with a horseradish. Um, it's communal style dining, so you can squeeze quite a few people in here. It's quite rowdy in this room, the grill room, but there are other rooms if you want a quieter time. Um, and yeah, imagine over the past 250 years, quite a few deals would have been done in here and many acquaintances made. Find a London Pride. Okay, it's gone for roast beef, Yorkshire pudding, roast potatoes, cauliflower cheese. That's amazing. That's all dinners kind of exactly how I describe the style, the style of food, the style of service. School dinner served by dinner ladies, and I don't mean that in a bad way, it is fantastic. It's kind of like the city's answer to the Ivy. It's much less pretentious though, believe it or not, and Simpsons has been established a lot longer. It is lunchtime, so the clock is ticking for a lot of people. It gives some of these guys, and it's mainly guys in here to be honest, women have been allowed in since 1916 I think, and most of the uh, staff are female today how modern but yeah the guys come in here they're let out of the office they give them a sniff of alcohol and they turn into little boys and the uh, the women know how to handle that so the service is swift and sharp um, but it's efficient the clock's ticking most people are here for lunch so that's exactly what you need you can't be hanging about unless you're on a long city lunch but yeah I definitely recommend it some of the other rooms are a bit more relaxed than the grill room Try a bit with the uh, horse radish. <laughs> I'm <laughs> 
As you can hear behind me, it's pretty lively here in the grill room. Everyone's enjoying their lunch. It's Friday after all. But like I was saying, if you want a slightly quieter lunch, if you're having a meeting, maybe there's a restaurant upstairs, there's a wine bar downstairs and a bar next door. But I love the atmosphere in here. Definitely recommend it. If you're visiting Simpsons, remember it's only open Monday to Friday. That entrance there is the entrance to the grill room. You'll also find the stairwell down to the wine bar and up to the restaurant dining room. That end is the pub and bar. You can come here and simply enjoy a drink. Okay, that was Simpsons. Simpsons Tavern, not to be confused with uh, Simpsons on the Strand. Definitely recommend that place. However, um, let's see if you can find it down all these alleyways. But I'm going to try and find one of the, uh, the old coffee shops. There's the back of the uh, grill room there. Yeah, what I recommend, there's different, depends what you're looking for. The grill room I was in, if you're from a city, it's like school dinner, so I definitely recommend that. The grill room, if you want a bit of banter with your work colleagues. Um, there's a pub section of it in the room next to it if you just want a drink. You can just go for a, uh, a drink on the other side of the grill room. It's just a pub. Downstairs is a wine bar which you can get food, you can get food in each of these bars. Um, so yeah, the one I was in the grill rooms, like the traditional one, um, school dinners, communal seating, you can have a good laugh, make a lot of noise. That's good fun. And, uh, wrong way. Yeah, there's a whole labyrinth of these alleyways. I've got no phone service in, the, in here either. So uh, you've got to know your way around. Um, what was I saying? Yeah, there's the pub, there's the grill room. Upstairs is a restaurant if you want something. If you want to have a quiet chat, I guess, and um, sort of table service. The dinner ladies in there will take care of the uh, boisterous city workers in the grill room where I was. Downstairs is a wine bar. Again, a little bit more relaxed. And uh, yeah, definitely recommend it. So, uh, oh right, here we go, right next door. This is the Jamaica Inn. It's on the site of London's first coffee store. This was once a churchyard, there's still a church behind there, St Michael's, but yeah, there's been a church or records of a church here since the year 179. There's records of St Michael's that date back to the 10th century. The first coffee shop was built here in the churchyard in 1652. However, everything burnt to the ground, including the church in the Great Fire of London in 1666 and had to be rebuilt. This building was built in the 1860s. Welcome to the jam pot. The coffee machine looks awesome. Um, again, this pub, like Simpsons Tavern, various different sections. We like a, an end booth, pretty quiet. Stairway down to a main bar below. Um, each section towards we get to the front here. Um, it's a little busier, right at the front. It's four past two in the afternoon. Front full of city workers. <coughs> anyway, it shows you the long city lunch is dead. It's alive and well. I'll show you. This is the cellar of the Jamaica Inn. Down here, more rooms. Uh, wine bar and restaurant. A little bit more of a relaxed and quiet atmosphere than upstairs. Wine bar underneath the, uh, underneath the pub. Even the hidden bars down dark alleyways have hidden underground bars within them in this part of town. It's great. Okay, you don't need me to tell you that there's definitely a drinking culture here in the city of London. You walk down this back alleyways, these medieval looking labyrinths of courtyards, um, and you're tripping over bars and pubs and they're full of punters then you go beneath the surface literally into the cellars they're full of punters yet more um, every now and again 
someone does something, someone from a firm does something at best, embarrassing, worst ways, illegal, ends up in court, and then the firm's cracking down it, zero tolerance. Then slowly but surely, it slips out of control again, and that seems to be a cycle that repeats itself. But yeah, it's been going on for hundreds of years and shows no sign of stopping. Another pub. One pub there. Another pub in that doorway there. Right. I'm going to uh, try and find my way back to work. Um, I did call one of my mates on the way here to see if he wanted lunch. He's normally up for a long lunch, especially on a Friday. He said, no, 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 not today. Uh, I want to do some work this afternoon and my missus will kill me if I fall asleep on the sofa again this week when I get home. I think that's an occupational hazard. Working in this city. Don't go down the dark alleyways. There's a whole labyrinth, there's a whole labyrinth of them down there. Who, who knows what's down there? But yeah, I would definitely recommend lunch at Simpsons. The Simpsons Tavern is definitely an institution here in uh, in the city. Um, Jamaica Inn's a great spot for a beer as well after work. Obviously, don't drink during the day. Make you less than productive. I don't think that roast dinner will help. But yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video, this vlog. A little tour about the scenes, the city of London. Yeah, back at the Royal Exchange building here. So yeah, thanks for watching. Thumbs up if you like this video. Subscribe if you want to see more. We'll see you in the next one. Toodles. Proof up there, the Royal Exchange building. Look, it's half two in the afternoon. And uh, yeah, as I was saying, anyone who tells you the uh, the long city lunch, especially on Fridays, is a thing of the past. Died in the 80s. Don't believe a word they say. For some, it's still the dream, but uh, for many, it still seems to be happening. Half two. Pubs and bars are full. Maybe people just think it, uh, think it finished because the ostentation of the 80s where people were doing it in clear sight is they're back in the dark alleyways. Still happening.